What's going on, guys? So, this is a really tall box. This is a double bullet. And this is a little itty bitty awesome move that I actually painted. And this is Master Grade Monday. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so on this Master Grade Monday, seems like we haven't done one in a while, like a real one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, as you guys know from the unboxing last week, obviously I picked up this MG Gundam H2 Double Bullet from uh, Tokyo House. Keep on the call Japan House, but that's what it used to be called, Japan. No, Tokyo, it is Japan House. Good lord, I can still never get it right. Either way, so uh, yay for that. I've always wanted to get the double bullet. I just never got around to it, and then age kits disappeared. So we have this thing. It has an awesome bit of artwork here on there, showing a really great scene of it here in well, Gundam mode. you got some beam effects happening down here. You've got some exploding stuff going on back here. It looks like a uh, uh, vegan suit. It took me a second. Definitely got one back here. And then down here you have it in its Wave Rider mode, I think is what it's called. Got another guy right there. Some pretty cool stuff. I really wish we had gotten some uh, MG Vegan suits. Maybe we should really start demanding of uh, Bandai that they do that. But it says MG up there in the corner. All the stuff down here. Bandai down there. And way down here in this bottom real corner says Bandai 2013. Kind of hard to handle a kit or a box this big. It's way over there. And coming around to the bottom here, you got our Federation Force Mobile Suit Gundam H2 Double Bullet. By the way, I'm holding this one-handed. It's surprisingly heavy. You got all kinds of stuff here in Japanese. I can't read it. You got some drawings and then other things. It looks almost Verica-like. It's really strange. You got clear parts right there for the age device. You got a cockpit. It does things. Oh yeah, I forgot you can access it in in Gundam mode. Huh. Okay. You got flight mode there flight mode front and rear obligatory front and rear view shots there the difficult part is i'm like holding this at full extension and come around to this side you got a repeat of the box like bandai hobby.net mg gundam edge and stuff and things it's actually some very nice box art and then you got mechanism it transforms into things of course it does landing gear because that's the thing it comes with twin dots cannon yep they can do that Calf missiles! Those are actually kind of really annoying. Uh, markings! Because, of course, comes stickers. Stuff and things! I don't actually know what any of that says, because it's in Japanese. And I'm not. You got a little guy with the toilet, all the obligatory warnings there. Got to be 15 to be able to pilot this, because that's the way that universe works. And 4,200 yen. Uh, I know the price is on here. I paid 55, so there was a little bit of a markup on it. So, there's that. Ugh. Holy crap. <laughs> Big ol' MG box. Still upside down. <sighs> that was a that was a workout. I'm not even I'm not even gonna lie. That that was actually surprisingly tough. Alright guys, so there's actually a build montage for this one. We haven't had one of those in a long, long time. I think that's a Zetas. Either that's a Zetas or one of the other ones is a Zetas. I can never remember. But either way, so let's go to the build montage. Right now.
All right, here we have the Gundam Age 2 double bullet. All nice and done and done. Now, guys, I will be honest. This is the third Age 2 I've built. I did the original normal. Then I've done the Special Forces normal. However you want to take that. And now this guy. I, I don't know if I'm tired of the mold. Or maybe it was just I got tired of building it like the, it was surprisingly complicated and I tend to forget this because I, I seem to only build them every couple of years the legs took me longer than the torso and the arms combined <laughs> it's like so this area fairly quick these guys so complex that they took a while and for the most part if you've seen these before it is very much like just a regular wing Gundam the way it kind of transforms into flight mode with the it doesn't necessarily have a bird mode but it's kind of close to the way that the wing Gundam transforms and uh, just getting it out the way real quick we'll do the comparison to the previous boy so there's a special forces version which I do love this that's why I bought it mind you I still paid way too much for this uh, but this is a good one and the fact that it's mostly white actually is a big bit of bit big bit of benefit because the nubs on this can be really bad considering the blue and the red but yeah so you can see some of the major differences obviously the color but then the wing pods are very different so the standard wing pods are like this you do get a lot of the same parts to build this but i don't think you get everything to complete it because um, i think some of the you're actually missing a runner to complete that but realistically if you wanted to slap these onto this it would just take pulling this off the shoulders for the most part uh nope take it wrong uh you'd have to remove the shoulder armor itself like the actual bits there that's actually different i forgot the legs are very very different so these are more of the sleek legs and these are much bulkier you can see down here this is everything from the calf down is incredibly different the feet themselves are exactly the same, but like you have very different armor parts at the base here. You do get a lot of this, so I think you could potentially build the legs uh, almost to completion. But So that's going to be a little bit of a different transformation than I was sort of used to. Now it's been so long, I'm going to have to consult the instructions. But for the most part, very similar. Almost the same build. Uh, even a lot of the same stickers, realistically. Uh, and where they place like up near the winglets and on the skirts and on the chest and stuff like that but for one last comparison bring in the h1 normal it was one of the earliest kits i ever did and it shows because the ankles keep coming out from under them which is still one of the best mgs i've ever built realistically i, I love this kit and i actually would love to get my hands on a new one to uh kind of do a fresher build for it Plus, I'd love to have a Titus or a Spalo. But I would love a full Glancer. They've never made one. And you also get a difference in the weapons, not just the shoulders. So you get the normal Dodds rifle here. You don't get anything at all for that in, in this kit. So, But you get twin Dodds rifles that are attached to the body there. Normally, I'd take those off for accessories and whatnot. But we'll look at that uh, separately later. So that's a big, big difference. So you lose the whole big chunk hanging off the front of the guy in flight mode so that's a big old difference but for the most part we'll look at the Gundam itself so if you look at the head you got some nice eyes up there foil stickers stuff like that I've always liked the design of this one where it has like the extra sensors and stuff going on around there I always thought it was nice and you do get the age symbol right there which is kind of the age device age scanner whatever you want to call it. It's the thing that makes the age system work, where it can scan and adapt. That's how it comes up with all the cool stuff. I do dig it. Uh, some of these stickers do stand out way too bad against, like, the blue. <laughs> so kind of uh, kind of dumb that I use those. But for the most part, it does look pretty good. Uh, you do get the EF, or EFF? -F? I think it's the EFF there. And then extra little silver e stickers, which barely stand out against the white, which I find really strange that they use that. You can almost not see them. Uh, it would have made more sense to make them gray or something like that. Uh, going into the new shoulder pods, you have them here, so it does rotate. And it's a ball joint mount here. I do wish that had a real hinge to it. That would make it a little bit better. It does move, 
I'm sorry, this one out here moves around a bit more, but you do get some flexibility. It's definitely not in the way as much as the wing pods are on the normal, so I can forgive that. You do get more stickers coming down here. The cockpit is right in there, but I actually am slightly unsure of how to access it, if I'm honest. I know how to do it in flight mode, but I'm drawing a blank on how to get in there in this mode. Okay, so that comes up. I know the cockpit is right there. So then all of this should fold down, right? I mean, you can't even get to it. The cockpit's right there. So that's something else that's gonna be very hard to get to. So we'll pull that out in uh, in flight mode. I'm just not gonna fight it, to be honest. Uh, these front skirts are nice. They already come separated. Don't have to worry about anything like that. They do sort of get in the way. Side skirts, they are what they are. They're exactly the same. You got the little bling blade, stuff like that. I'm probably gonna skip real articulation on this one because we've seen it before, so nothing really changes. You even got the double bent knee here for transformation, so that's gonna be a little weird. I'm probably gonna skip that realistically. And I will skip the actual transformation sequence because we've seen that already for the most part. I think only very few parts are gonna change. Plus, it'll keep the video a little bit shorter. I know how much you guys like that, but I mean, the details on here are actually very nice. I like the stickers back here on the spoiler. Once again, the only Gundams that get spoilers. He does have the missile pods, or whatever you want to call them. They're calf, calf missiles. Which way do they rock? Uh, they're they're in there. And my biggest problem with them is that the fitment is so tight, it's kind of useless. I think I got it backwards. I think they come upward. <laughs> no, I don't know. There we go. Okay. Oh, that one's actually so tight. I can't. Okay. So you get the calf missile right in there. It's actually a little tiny separate bit. But the, there's such a tight fit that there ain't no way to pull that back out. You know, if I clean the nubs up a little bit better, maybe. But honestly, never going to use them. Totally forgot they were there until I read the box. But, you know, like I said before, the legs are all new down here. So you can see all the new cool stuff. Ankle tilt and all that still works the same. It's all good. Took a thrusters in the bottom of the foot. So he's still pretty neat. Now I just realized, for the most part, that I forgot to do his beam sabers. But you guys know what beam sabers look like. So that's not a big deal. And you do get more squarish beam sabers for him. That's always appreciated because, you know, I never have too little in the way of beam sabers. <laughs> good God. But real quick, I will talk about this little boy here. So I actually have a painted Asamu. I'm gonna zoom in on it because I'm not gonna try to pull it closer to the camera. So normally I don't paint my MG little figures, but in this case, I wanted to give it a try. I got new brushes and stuff. So it is painted purely with Gundam marker and you know, so you have to squidge out and brush it and it's kind of a custom mix of that sky blue and some white you've got some just regular metallic green i'm not i don't remember which blue that is from which gundam marker kit and a mix of yellow and white just to get the hair and a mix of different colors to get flesh tone um but that no, was pretty fun now the one that's in the cockpit is also painted so whenever i get a chance to dig him out later we'll do that now for weapons he does have the rifles on the shoulders which by the way we can rotate forward so he can shoot all the things over there. I think that's kind of cool because you don't have to like hold the weapons or anything. And you do rotate on multiple fronts, I did say that. And you can really tilt it. Now you do have the rifle itself, which is right here, which can actually pull down. There's a couple tabs inside these claw thingies. And you can just tab it in place. That's for one mode, I guess. Uh, I personally, I think this is one of the sillier things it does. But, hey, it's a thing it can do, so I may as well tell you about it. So the rifles extend. I assume they can shoot better that way. Oh, and uh, by the way, guys, I forgot to... 
do this, but he can totally do this number. Like I was joking that he, you know, he wouldn't have to, but it's actually an option. I just, uh, I was going into transformation and totally missed that. So if you wanted to have more of a directional beam situation, you could do that. So yeah, it, there's, there's that option though. It does cause a lot of tension between the arms and the way the shoulder thingies are, but I mean, it kind of looks cool if I'm honest. <laughs> It's like, that's my assumption. It just shoots better that way. I'll go ahead and pull the rifles out. Like so. And they can do more than just be shoulder mounted. You can actually drop the handle down. Do it on both. I can. Come on. Okay, that one's a little stuck. Come on, buddy. There we go. It was just in there. And uh, it does come with a multitude of hands, which is basically just swapping out the fingers. I have the weapon holding fingers here. And just so you can see, it's the one with the little tongue in there. So that's the one that's made to peg into the front of the grip of the handle. Much like that. And you just kind of work away around the thumb. This has to come down just a little bit. Hold on. Hold on. It's choked, choked up a little too high on the handle there. And then you just plug the bad boy back in. If it'll go. Come on. Now, this would be the main reason I dislike these style of hands. They just don't want to cooperate. Like... <sighs> There we go. So we can hold the rifle. Okay, so that one went in just a little bit easier than the previous. So you can hold the rifles so you can be shooting at things like so. But that doesn't mean that the weapons pods are done. No, sir. They can do other things. So and it's going to be a little difficult because I didn't want to work when there wasn't extra stuff to it. But if you grab a hold of it and just yank the entire thing off... I knew that was going to happen. I could sense it. So this guy is supposed to slide up and out. If you can see it here now that it's fully exposed. Yeah, when there's nothing on there, it can wiggle. That makes a big difference. Now it doesn't want to go back together. Because why would it? Why would it ever want to go back together? Wow, that took some of my thumbnail with it. Okay, guys, I had to cut that because I was struggling. I did finally get it open. I had the exact same problem where it came apart on me. It actually split my thumbnail. Um, it just, it, and actually some of my thumbnail is still stuck in there. So that particular part that's supposed to slide, it gave me problems even before I fully assembled it. So it's just not happy. I mean, I'm trying to wiggle it. To free it up, look, it's doing the exact same thing. The red part comes off instead of the whole thing sliding outward like it's supposed to. And my biggest worry is that that's not that big of a piece of plastic. So I'm worried that that really will just come apart on me at some point and just snap off. So after this, I'm probably going to leave these open. That one actually functioned properly, if you saw that. It's like... <laughs> It's the only one that moved with very little effort. <sighs> That's annoying. You can tell I'm going to be a little bit frustrated at the end of this. Like, there's a reason I'm not going to transform on camera because I know it's going to be frustrating. So, that gives us the excuse to use these cool new beam effect parts, which slide right up in here. There's a nice little hole that that plugs into way up in there. And then. It looks as though it's supposed to tab closed over it, and it does. So there's your nice big beam effect part. Very kind of reminiscent of uh, the double O riser, if I'm honest. I like it. 
Mind you, the guy who did these things also did double O, if I remember correctly. Which, actually, these would be really cool if you put a GN drive in there. If somebody really wants to make a cool custom, so you got some spare GN drives left over. Now, you could potentially do it on HG and save yourself some effort. But, there we go. Now we've got the H2 double bullet, double bulleting. So, he did fly around and slice a lot of people up. Stuff like that. It actually looks pretty cool, but... That was kind of a pain in the butt, if I'm honest. I'm trying to figure out if that's supposed to be like that. This is for, I like to do a lot of these things for the first time with you guys watching, honestly. Uh, so that you can see my frustration or success, one way or the other. So you can see what it's like to really deal with it. But what I'm going to do, we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to transform it, and then we'll come back. Because I've got to transform the other one while I'm at it, too. So be right back, guys. Oh boy, so I'm very glad I skipped that. Um, so yeah, I kind of forgot how annoying this transformation truly was. Um, it's not terrible, but it can be very finicky and annoying. The uh, main problem I had was getting the chest loose from the part that slides up and down so that the head kind of tucks away. And then I had a couple more issues with just getting the uh, hands and stuff plugged in the way they're supposed to. Now you do get the uh, fake knuckle parts that kind of plug in back here so it looks like he's gripping his legs. Um, I'm not using those just because uh, he's never going to be in this mode outside of this right here. Um, so this is just normal normal kind of flight mode. It does look funny without anything hanging out the front. Because so you still have the hole right there that the rifle would normally plug into. And this is just for flying around purposes, obviously. Now there's so many things that have to be lined up just right to kind of make this work. <sighs> it's super annoying, if I'm honest. But if you want to go into attack mode, you can rotate these forward. You can also rotate it just at the gun. I'm just rotating it where I want to rotate it, if I'm honest. Okay, so if you rotate it at the gun, it looks like that. I totally forgot to tuck that handle away. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Actually, it looks better rotated with just the gun. You see I have to hold the arm in place to rotate everything. Oh, there it went. It broke loose. So this tabs into this little bit back here. And it sort of plugs in where the fingers normally do. And you can see that's incredibly annoying. The other thing you can do is put down here is flip these bits back. And now he's in... I need to fly around quickly, sort of. And he does have a landing mode. Remember, he's like on the deck. Basically, you just take the knee caps, pull them out on these little hinges, so that's your rear landing gear. And if you need your front landing gear, this is a funny one. So you want to pull off this part, if it'll come off. It's supposed to come off. But sometimes it's very finicky. And they give you the landing gear itself, which just plugs in like so. Oh, I forgot you can plug that back on like that. So it actually looks like the landing gear comes out of the crotch. And yeah, I have the instructions lying here so I can see what the heck I'm doing. So I always got to be honest with you guys. Okay, so there he is in his flight mode. I think it's probably the weakest weakest idea here. You know, got to do what you got to do. And uh, I was going to transform the other one, but I got this far. Is it? Eh, it's all good. So you could you could see roughly how big it is because uh, you can stand the Asimu like that. And for the one that's actually in the cockpit, since I talked about it earlier, can't access the cockpit, it's fairly easy, it's just right under here. So flip that guy up and slide it down. And you guys can see that, I'll zoom in. You can see I painted it very similarly, but I didn't have any uh, hair or uh, flesh tone to paint. So uh, personally, I wouldn't want my uh, cockpit to be that expo that close to exposed space. Like, literally, there's nothing here. Anybody shoot you right there, dead instantly. <laughs> and that's the wifey laughing in the background. All right, I'm going to put this thing back in Gundam mode and uh, 
not 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 worry about it anymore <laughs> all right guys so final thoughts we're gonna uh, do over this weird um uh, battle battle tech mech that we've got going on here um honestly it, it's a good kit um I've, i have my frustrations with it but mostly with the transformation and stuff but i'm less frustrated with it over say the normal which has the same kind of silly issues with the wings, regardless of which way you go with it. Now, unfortunately, other than the Dark Hound, we don't have another Age 2. Now, one day I do hope to get the Dark Hound, because I really do like that version. But, considering that I've been like trying to make up for the first time I built the Age 2, with every successive one I've done, I, I think I did a better job on this than I even did on the previous Special Forces version. I think, um, if you find it at pretty much yen cost definitely worth it i mean i was happy to find it because it, i needed more stuff in my age collection and i actually always like the design i do like the cool beam effects and stuff like that i'll probably be displaying him in that mode with the with the beams hanging out of him and stuff like that because i do think that's pretty cool i think eventually i'll have them all on a stand and stuff like that because the one thing about the age two is they like to fall over now the age one just given its actual you know age the feet keep giving out from under it. Whereas this one can tend to have a balance issue and its feet are kind of limited and the knees are wonky. In fact, while transforming, just to get the legs back to this, which un unaccordioning, unaccordioning the knees, ended up untabbing it, actually, so it actually came apart on me, which is the first time that's ever happened. It wasn't a big deal, but, you know, it is what it is. If you like age, like I do, if you like the kits, if you really like the second... Uh, I don't want to say season, the second part with Asumu and stuff like that. You know, I, I suggest getting the age MGs are pretty good. Uh, I have not done an H2 HG except for the Magnum. So there's that. I might still do the MG Magnum. Uh, if you did, well, let me know. I know a couple people in the thing said below that they have it. They haven't built it yet. And of course, the guy who won one, you know, he's got that. <laughs> so uh, I might get the Magnum down the line. I don't know how I feel about it just yet because doesn't necessarily fit in with anything else I've got. Uh, whereas the age shelf, you know, it is what it is. Uh, one day, I hope to get more age kits. We need the age threes desperately. A gun, an MG Legolas Gundam would be awesome. In any MG Vagan kits would also be awesome. Let me know down below what MGs from age you would love to see. And of course, hit that thumbs up button down there. Hit the subscribers button if you have not. We've gotten a few more subscribers lately, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there anyone is really seeing the videos when I put them out. Um, I don't know if that's still a an algorithm problem or what, uh, but the views have still been very low despite changing a lot of things. So I, you know, it's hard for me to know whether people just don't care and don't watch, or if people aren't seeing that in the first place. So hopefully you guys saw this pop up. Uh, Master Grid Mondays tend to do pretty well. But uh, let me know down below uh, if you have any issues seeing any of my videos. But uh, make sure you go back and you watch the couple Transformers Model Kits videos from last week, between Thursday and Friday. Some really cool kits, including a custom. And of course, speaking of customs, coming up later this week, we will have the reveal of the local type custom that I've been working on for a very long time time and in fact filming that particular uh video <laughs> was not easy and uh we ended up actually screwing things up <laughs> just so you know ahead of time but i'll catch you guys on the next review remember as always to keep on building oh and uh da, da, go make sure you check out the second channel if you want to see all my non bottle building stuff but bye guys <laughs>